Hello and welcome to this video on first order system models. In the previous video, we looked at some of the basic building blocks of both electrical and mechanical systems. And in this video, we're going to start to sort of put these together to form some mathematical models of various systems. The systems that we're going to look at in this particular video are examples of first order systems. And we'll see what we mean by that in just a moment. In the next video, we're also going to uh, assemble some models for second order systems as well. So for the first example, we're going to look at this circuit here, which is an RC circuit, a series RC circuit. And we can see here that this consists of two components, a resistor and a capacitor. And we have an input in the form of a supply voltage, this voltage Vs. The output of this circuit is the measurement of the voltage across the capacitor, Vc. So Vc is our output voltage. Now, to start assembling a mathematical model for this circuit, we're going to first consider Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the sum of the voltages dropped around the circuit must be equal to the voltage applied to the circuit. In other words, the voltage supply must be equal to the sum of all the voltages dropped across the components. So in our case, then, we can say something like this. Vr plus Vc equals Vs. In other words, the voltages across each of these two components, the voltage across the resistor Vr and the voltage across the resistor Vc, must add up to the supply voltage Vs. One change in notation that we're going to make is to reflect that our voltages are functions of time. Our capacitor might charge or discharge, meaning that its voltage will change over time. And this means that the voltage Vr might potentially change as well. Even our supply voltage might not necessarily be constant. We'll talk more about inputs and different types of inputs in a later video. So for now, we'll write something like this. Vr of t plus Vc of t is equal to Vs of t. Our output is the voltage across the capacitor. We mentioned earlier, Vc. So let's suppose that we want to find an expression for Vc. Well, we could rearrange our expression to something that looks like this. Vc equals Vs minus Vr. But this isn't really helpful because we don't know Vr. The value of Vr depends on the value of Vc, after all. So recalling one of the building blocks from our uh, previous video, the building block for the resistor, we can make the following substitution for Vr because we said that Vr is equal to Ri. We saw that in the previous video. So now we have something like this. Ri of t plus Vc of t is equal to Vs of t. At the moment, we're simply expressing current as I of t or I as a function of time. And because this is a series circuit, we know that the same current, I, flows through both the resistor and the capacitor. Well, how does this help us? Recall that earlier we said that the voltage across the capacitor can be expressed like this. Vc equals 1 over C multiplied by the integral of I with respect to time. We saw that in our previous video. If we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to t, we'll get something like this. dvc by dt is equal to 1 over c multiplied by i, because the differential of the integral of i is just i. The differential and the integral cancel one another out in some sense. We can rearrange this expression to look like this. i equals c multiplied by d v c by d t. Okay, so why have we done this? Well, let's revisit this equation r i of t plus v c of t equals v s of t. Now, what we can do with this equation because of what we've derived here is we can substitute for i. So rather than r i of t, we can now, we've said already here that i equals c d v c by d t and we can substitute for i in this equation. So we'll see something like this. r now c dv, dvc by dt plus vct equals vst. So why have I done this? Well, notice that the left-hand side of our previous equation here is now all in terms of the output vc. And the other side 
is all in terms of our input, Vs. So we've created a first order differential equation to represent this system. It's expressed only in terms of the input and the output of that system. Let's have a look at a second example here, very similar, but now we have a series RL circuit. So here we have um, two components, an inductor and a resistor. We apply some supply uh, voltage, Vs, but now the output of the voltage is the voltage that's measured across the resistor. So as before, let's begin by stating an equation for the circuit in terms of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So in this case, we'll have VL plus VR equals VS. And again, it's best to express those as functions of time. So we have something like this. The reason I'm being quite particular about these functions of time, or, or otherwise known as being in the time domain, is because later in this topic we'll talk about Laplace transforms. We'll convert from the time domain and then back to the time domain again, but we won't worry about that for now. So for this example here, hopefully you've got the idea from the previous equation that we want one side of our equation to be in terms of the output only, in terms of, in our case, VR of T in this particular circuit and we want the other side to be in terms of the input, Vs of t. Well, the right-hand side of our equation is all right for now. It's in terms of Vs of t. I don't need to worry about that. But here, we've got Vr of t, and we've also got Vl of t. So we need to do something about this Vl of t to make it so that it's also in terms of Vr of t as well. So to do that, let's recall one of the building blocks for the inductor that we talked about in the previous video. It was this one here, Vl equals L di by dt. And so I'm going to substitute that into this equation here. So we'll see something that looks like this. L di by dt plus Vr of t is equal to Vs of t. Now we still have a problem here because now we've just got a function um, in terms of current, a, a term that's in terms of current here, i of t. We still need to convert this so that it's expressed in somehow in the form of Vr of t. And so what do we do here? Well, another one of our building blocks fortunately comes to the rescue. Again, it's the equation for the resistor. Vr equals Ri. Now here we can see we're converting somehow from current, something in terms of current, to something in terms of Vr, which is what we want to do here because we have something in terms of current, but we need to convert it so that it's in terms of Vr. So let's look at this equation here, Vr equals Ri, in other words, Ohm's law. We can rearrange this to say I equals Vr over R. And we can then substitute this for I in our equation. So you might ask, why is it we can use this equation for resistance, for a resistor, when we're substituting for an inductor? Well, Again, it's important to remember that this is a series circuit. This is why we can get away with this, because the current, I, must be the same current through both of these components. So regardless of whether it's the expression I for a resistor, it's still going to apply, or I can still substitute it in, for the current flowing through the inductor, because it's the same current. So now when we've done that, we should have something that looks like this. We had di of t respect, uh, with respect to time, but now I've, uh, I've changed that i, or substituted for that i, because we've already said here that i equals vr over r. So now we have d vr over r over dt plus vr of t equals vs of t. Now we can tidy this up a little bit because we can take this r outside of this fraction or, or sort of fact, take that factor out. Um, like here, we have now L over r d v r by dt. I'm allowed to take that out of the um, this differential here or this derivative because r is a constant. So it's, it's not going to be um, affected by this differentiation. So rather than have the over r inside the derivative, I'm taking the over r outside of the derivative. That just tidies it up a little bit, but I'm not really changing the expression. So now again here, we have a, another, another example of a first order 
differential equation. Again, notice that the left-hand side now is all in terms of VR. When I say that it's all in terms of VR, I'm just talking about the functions of in the, or functions of time or in the time domain. I'm not talking about these L and R terms here. They're constants. But any functions of T, any functions of time, are all VR. And remember, VR is the output. So our left-hand side is all in terms of the output VR. The right-hand side is all in terms of the input Vs. So here's another example of a first-order differential equation um, in terms of only the output and the input of the system. The previous two examples were electrical in nature, but for the last example, let's look at a mechanical instance as well, because we looked at some of the mechanical building blocks in our previous video as well. So what we can see here is a free body diagram which includes a mass and a dash pot. And this arrangement is connected to a rigid wall which we're assuming can't move. And what we can see here is there's a force that is acting on the mass. And what we'll find is, remembering our building blocks from the previous video, is that that dash pot is going to exert some kind of resistance to that movement. So what we can do is we can start to build up a equation to represent this system of forces. Let's do that by just focusing more on this mass for a moment because we have this force, F of T, acting on this mass in one direction but we'll also have forces acting in the opposite direction and what we'll find is first of all the dash pot is going to exert an opposing force in this direction but also the mass itself is going to have some inertia the inertia being some resistance to any change in velocity so the fact that we've got this force f of t acting in one direction the inertia of that mass is going to produce a force acting in the opposite direction as well so we'll mark that as f m uh, the force exerted by the inertia of the mass and then our other force here we mentioned earlier we've called f d the force produced by the dash pot resisting the motion of that mass as well so what we can say by conservation of forces in this instance is that fd of t plus fm of t must be equal to f of t which is to say that this force that we apply to the system f of t must be equal to the force on the dash pot plus the force produced by the inertia of the mass acting in the opposite direction as well. So if you've been following along with the previous electrical examples, you've hopefully got the idea by now that we want a function of our input on one side of the equation, that's f of t in our case, and we want the other side of the equation to all be in terms of the output or the response that we're interested in studying. For this example, we've not really defined what we mean or intend as the output, and we could do um, several things. We could use uh, Fm, the inertial force of the mass, as our output, in which case we'd have to rearrange or substitute for F of d using the building blocks, similar to the electrical examples there, so that all of the left-hand side here is all in terms of Fm. In our case, let's suppose that we're interested in studying the force on the dash pot here. So the output in this case, we want to be entirely in terms of Fd of t. So in order to work towards this, let's revisit two of the describing equations we saw in a previous video when we looked at mechanical analogies. We said that a mass, F of m, or the force on a mass rather, F of m, we said is equal to m multiplied by dv by dt. For a dash pot, we said f of d, the force on the dash pot, is equal to mu v. We talked a bit more about those in, pre in the previous video. 
So let's begin by substituting our describing equation for mass into the equation to replace f m of t, because I know that I want all of my left-hand side here to be in terms of the output, and we want the output in this example to be the force on the dashboard, f of d. So f of m has to go. So let's substitute for f of m, we see something like this, f of d, f d of t, now plus m dv t by dt is equal to f of t. Now we have one term in terms of f d, which is what we want, and one term in terms of v, velocity. But we want both of these to be in terms of f d. Remember, the whole idea is we want all of this left-hand side to be in terms of the, the, the output. So to help with this, let's examine the describing function for the dash pot. We've written it here, f d equals mu v. We can rearrange this to v equals f d over mu. So substituting this in for the equation, we're changing something that was in terms of v to something that's now in terms of f d, and we now have something that looks like this. f d of t plus m d f of d over mu by d t equals f of t. Now that's a bit of a mess again. That um, coefficient mu is a constant. I can take that outside of the derivative and tidy this up a little bit. It looks something like this. So now again we have another example of a first order differential equation in terms of the output f d of t on one side of the equation and the input f of t on the other. Hopefully you found this video useful looking at how we can set up examples of first order differential equations. In the next video we're going to look at very similar examples but putting together models or functions for second order differential equations.